Hi guys, this is Mrs. Murray, your media specialist and extended essay coordinator, and we're here today so that we can talk about extended essay. I know you're excited to get started on this process, um, so let's just jump right in. The first thing that I need you to do is I need you to get out your cell phone and please text the message at SCHSIB2015 to the phone number 786 2206016. This will allow you to join our Remind 101 group, um, which will keep you informed about deadlines. I will send you reminders so that you stay on task with this process because the quickest way to get this done is to just follow the simple steps I'm going to have laid out for you. You can also sign up. Um, for emails through this, so if you need to do email instead of text, please just stop by the Media Center and see me. Alright, so first, what is the point of the extended essay process? It, it seems like we spend so much time just focusing on getting stuff done that we don't stop to think about what really is our purpose. So what is the point? This is the um, IB mission statement. The International Baccalaureate aims to develop inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. It encourages students across the world to become active, compassionate, and lifelong learners who understand that other people with their differences can also be right. So that's like very big picture, but where does extended essay fit into that giant mission? Well, the center, the center of the IB curriculum, as you know, the center of that circle of the six areas, is Extended Essay, Theory of Knowledge, and CAS. The Theory of Knowledge course that you're going to be taking next year really asks you to question everything. It asks you to think deeply about how you learn and how human beings acquire knowledge. Um, the Extended Essay process asks you to take that and and dig deeply into some academic area that you're passionate about. It asks you to really take your content knowledge and think bigger and try to find something that you haven't had time to really explore fully in your classes and explore it on your own to show what you're capable of. And then of course there's CAS which asks you to take all of this passion and knowledge that you've been acquiring and do something to impact the world. So if you don't dig into these three center elements of the IB curriculum to really personalize your experience, then what's the point of even being an IB? If you're just here for content knowledge, then you're not really furthering that mission where you're trying to think outside of yourself. So extended essay is a big part of that. And so yes, extended essay can be a really long, drawn out, torturous process if you let it be. But if you really grasp hold of this this purpose, if you really find your passion and decide you're going to dig into it deeply, you will find that this process can be, while a struggle, can be very rewarding and can be, in fact, the biggest thing that impacts your preparation for college because once you've been able to research academically on your own, you're ready to tackle anything when you get to all of these great colleges you're going to go to. So what exactly is an extended essay? Well, at its root, it's just a 3,000 to 4,000 word research essay. That's the main component. It's cool because you have the opportunity, as I said, to independently dig into a topic that interests you. There's the key word, interests you. And it should be something that relates to a subject that you have studied with IB. There are several subject areas that are, you're technically allowed to do with for your extended essay, but we don't offer those classes at IB, so they're not a good choice. Or we don't offer those classes here at Spruce Creek, so they are not a good choice for um, this particular assignment because you're not going to be able to score as high. IAs tend to be very scripted. You're plugging this in here and that in there, but the EE gives you much more freedom. Yes, there are some requirements. You have to have a table of contents, an abstract, but the root of the actual paper, you have a lot of freedom what you're going to write about and how you're going to tackle that subject. So you have choices of subject areas. At this point, you should have a an extended essay packet in front of you. 
Um, if you don't have one and you're viewing this from home, please go to, to the Spruce Creek I, IB website and go under students and look for the extended essay process and print out your own copy of the packet. I need you to look at pages 8 and 9 in the packet because that's where it tells you what subject areas you can choose from. Group 1, you can choose anything related to English and literature. It's basically analysis of a novel or two novels that were originally written in English. Um, we typically have 20 to 30 students choose group one each year. For group two, you are writing in a language, a world language of your choice that we offer here. So you could choose Spanish, French, or German. Um, you do not have to be perfectly fluent in the language in order to choose a group two topic, but you're going to want to at least be moving towards fluency in order to be successful since you do have to write in the language. Group three, Econ, History, Psych, this tends to be our biggest area that students choose. Group 4, Biology, Chemistry, Physics, these papers are rooted in, in an experiment and one that's interdisciplinary that a lot of students at our school choose is environmental which also is rooted in an experiment but it ties together um, the human aspect that's why it's interdisciplinary between group 3 and 4. Group 5, math. We don't typically have very many students who choose math, but the ones who do are very passionate about it. So if you're passionate about math, you should look into that one. And then group 6, dance, music, theater, visual arts. We also typically have students each year, one or two, who want to pick one of these other topics that where we don't necessarily have a class, an IB class that you're taking at our school related to the topic, but if you can find a good supervisor who's willing to supervise you in that subject area, um, these have not been eliminated as options for you, but you have to really be passionate and want to do it. So the first question I usually get at this point is which one of these is the one where I'm going to get the highest score? Well according to international data, two-thirds of the students who choose group one topics tend to score an A or a B. That's the one where you have the highest number of A's and B's. The highest proportion of A's based on um, number of papers submitted, the highest proportion of just A's is in group six. Now is this because these topics are easier? No, I don't think so. I think the reality is that the key to earning a high score is writing about something you're passionate about and a student who's choosing dance, music, theater, visual arts tends to be very passionate about that subject and so they tend to score higher. So I need you to really, when you're considering which subject area to do, think about not just what's going to increase your test scores, although that helps too, but I want you to think about what you're really interested in and pick that area because that's where you're going to get the highest score. And what does that score, what does the grade even mean? Um, these are the results from 2013 at Spruce Creek High School. We had 3% uh, of our students earned an A on their extended essay, 24% earned a B, 37% earned a C, 33% earned a D, and 3% earned an E. So five students earned an E. That's not a high number, but that's still not good because I want you to look at this chart. This is how the extended essay fits into the points that you need for graduation. Look on the uh, left-hand side and you'll see your grade for extended essay, and then across the top you see the grades for your th theory of knowledge paper. These two components from the center of the circle work together to earn you some points towards your graduation. Remember you need 24 points to graduate uh, with your IB diploma and they have to meet some certain requirements which we're not going over in this presentation. But you could earn three points out of that 24 for your extended essay and theory of knowledge paper if you got an A on both or an A on one and a B on the other. Three points, that's going to definitely take the stress off some of your tests and it's also going to push you up higher in the point category which is going to help if you're trying to apply for those really competitive colleges because they don't just want you to have an IB diploma they want you to have an IB diploma with a lot of points um, so then if you look at the at the chart and you go down to the other end an E on 
either of those papers results in a failing condition. And what that means is that you are no longer in that 24 point category. Now you have to earn 28 points in order to get an IB diploma. You do not want to be in that category. Let me say that again. You do not want to get an E on e either the extended essay or the theory of knowledge paper. D or higher. But really, truthfully, we want to earn some points here. We don't want to go through this process and end up in that zero category and just have it not hurt us. We want to earn some points that have us push us forward. So we're looking for A's and B's. Do notice that there is also that the column that says not submitted. If you don't submit either of these and what's not on there, if you um, submit but you get accused of malpractice or an act of academic dishonesty, then that is automatically no IB diploma. So they are requirements. How much time can you expect to invest into this process? Well, IB says if you're earning an A, you're going to spend approximately 40 hours. So that kind of breaks down into 5 to 10 hours understanding the process, finding a topic, reading background information to narrow the topic down, about 10 to 15 hours finding quality sources and digesting the information, and 10 to 15 hours writing and typing a complete first draft five to ten hours revising and seeking guidance from your supervising teacher. So yeah, it's a lot of hours, but it's broken down into, into pieces. You're not sitting at your computer for 40 hours writing a paper. So um, this is where I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to do part two where we're going to talk about the actual timeline and keeping the process manageable. So check for part two in the videos. Thanks for listening to part one.